Hey there, this is Mr. Gonzalez. This is a review of the New York State uh, Living Environment Required Labs. There were four labs that we had to do for the year. The first one was Making Connections, then Diffusion Through a Membrane, Relationships and Biodiversity, and then Beaks of Finches. Let's start with Making Connections. The main point of Making Connections was an investigation of how blood circulation is related to muscle fatigue. Now, in this lab, there were two main things that were done. First of all, everyone in the class took their pulse rate uh, while resting, and then everyone recorded their results on a histogram, which showed results for the whole class. And then you exercised to see how your heart rate would change. Then a second part of the lab was you used a clothespin to measure how many times it could be squeezed in one minute, and then shortly after you did it for a second trial. Key questions in making connections. First one is how is heart rate related to exercise? Well, heart rate increases, but that's not really what the regents wants to know. They really want to know what's the whole point of your heart circulation increasing. And the reason is, basically, the more you exercise, the more your cells need energy. And that requires more oxygen, more glucose, more ATP to perform cellular respiration. Another key question is what caused your fingers to get tired when you were doing the clothespin exercise? And the main reason is because waste products start to build up inside your cells. So a lack of oxygen causes an increase in waste products. You build up lactic acid and blood circulation is increased to flush out all those wastes. Second lab, diffusion through a membrane. This is the one where you made a little cell using a bag. The whole point of this was to investigate how selectively permeable membranes work. You use two, dialysis tubing and red onion. First of all, the first part of this lab, you constructed a fake cell and you filled it with two solutions, glucose and starch. You then used starch indicator and glucose indicator to determine what moved. Number two, second time, second week, you used a red onion, sometimes called purple onion, um, and you added salt to the onion to see what would happen. So main questions, what happens to starch, glucose, and iodine? Well, starch is too large to diffuse, and in the lab, glucose and iodines were small enough to diffuse through the membrane. What is the effect of adding salt to the red onion cell? The salt causes the fluid to drain from the cell. The process, what's it called? Osmosis. And lastly, what is the effect of adding a solution with a lower salt concentration to a cell with a higher solute concentration? That basically means... Um, if you added fresher water to a very salty cell, well, what would happen is the cell would expand or burst because osmosis, the water would go into the cell. This is a picture of osmosis, the red onion cell shrinking because we added salt. Third, relationships and biodiversity. The main point of this was not to figure out which plant cured cancer. The main point was to figure out the relationship between several species using two methods, structural, that means looking at them, and molecular, which means a bunch of other stuff. First week, you uh, observed the, the plants themselves. Two, you used a fizzing indicator to determine if an enzyme was present. Three, you performed paper chromatography. Four, you amino acid sequence observed. You compared their amino acid sequences. And five, you performed a simulated gel electrophoresis with paper. Structurally, basically that means look at their leaves, their, their, um, their stems, their flowers, and compare. This was the enzyme test, which you put in a little uh, bid. If it had the enzyme, it pizzed, it, it pizzed, it fizzed, which was positive for the enzyme. And the last thing was a paper chromatography, sorry, a gel electrophoresis test where you simulated a gel and our results looked like this. Basically, the ones that match the most uh, lines are most closely related because they share the most DNA. Main points in relationships and biodiversity bio lab, which type of evidence, structural or molecular, is more reliable when testing a relationship? Well, it turns out that molecular is more reliable. For one, unrelated species can look alike if they inhabit the same environment. For example, a shark and a dolphin kind of look very similar. That's because they are in the same environment, but their genes are very different. And second, similar genes show evidence of sharing a more common ancestor. So we can tell if they shared a common ancestor by looking at their genes. 
a biological explanation for the common characteristics that the species share. Uh, you can either say they had a common ancestor or they share similar genes. Additional kinds of evidence you can use to show the relationship. Uh, you guys had great answers for that. You can study their reproductive habits. You can observe their interaction with other species. You can study habitat, climate, all that stuff. And last but not least, beaks of finches. This was to show how adaptations in beak shape can affect natural selection or survival. Number one, students were assigned beaks. There were tools. Two, we used plates of beans to represent islands. And three, students that were unsuccessful were forced to move to a new island of large beans. Now the whole point of this lab was to show what adaptations were successful. So which ones caused? Answers will vary. But things that I saw were like your beak was broad, it had greater grip, um, the bird, maybe the person with the beak had better eyesight, you had faster uh, reflexes due to, to light body weight. Those are all adaptations. Key terms that are used in the lab, natural selection, selecting agent, variation, survival of the fittest, adaptations, niche, and better adapted to. A selecting agent is pretty much the one that confused everyone. That's the, the, um, the thing in the environment that caused you to live or die. So the selecting agent in this activity for the birds was the number of seeds you got. And that's it. Good luck on the part D of the regions. Bye!